water is abundant in nature it is a natural resource it covers nearly three-fourths of the earth's surface in the form of snow over mountains as a liquid in the rivers lakes springs and oceans it is very essential for the growth of human body and has significant role in industry agriculture and civilization adequate supply of fresh and clean drinking water is a basic need for all human beings but due to rapid urbanization and industrialization water is getting polluted day by day hello everybody i heartily welcome you all to join our today's lesson as we know that the water quality is degrading day by day due to unplanned and unsystematic industrial and urban development industrial effluence and domestic sewage contains several microorganisms like bacteria algae viruses protozoa etc and even higher organisms when these substances increase their concentrations then the water becomes polluted do you know what water pollution is actually any change in physical chemical or biological properties of water that can adversely affect living being or reduce its utility for further use is known as water pollution ja asi keh sakde ha ki pani vich unwanted particles ja contaminant de mix hon nu water pollution kende han pani de pradushan de effects sirf manukha te hi nahi sago janwar machhiyan ate panchhiyan te vi pende han polluted water peen layi recreation agriculture ate industries vich varto layak nahi hunda eh chila ate nadiyan di quality nu kharab karda hai es to vi gambhir eh hai ki eh aquatic life nu nuksan pahunchanda hai ate jali jeevan di reproductive ability nu ghatonda hai ਇਹ ਮਨੁੱਖੀ ਸਿਹਤ ਲਈ ਵੀ ਖਤਰਨਾਕ ਹੈ ਧਰਤੀ ਉੱਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਣੀ ਪ੍ਰਦੂਸ਼ਿਤ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੇ ਮਾੜੇ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵ ਤੋਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਚ ਸਕਦਾ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਮਸਟ ਨੋ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਟਾਈਪਸ ਆਫ ਵਾਟਰ ਪੋਲੂਟੈਂਟਸ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਫੈਕਟਰਸ ਥੈਟ ਆਰ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਲ ਫॉर ਵਾਟਰ ਪੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਲੈਟਸ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਇਟ ਟਾਈਪਸ ਆਫ ਵਾਟਰ ਪੋਲੂਟੈਂਟਸ ਵਾਟਰ ਯੂਜ਼ਡ ਫॉर ਹਾਊਸਹੋਲਡ ਐਗਰੀਕਲਚਰਲ and industrial purposes when discharged after use is polluted with soluble insoluble matter and even pathogens water pollutants can be classified into three categories biological chemical and physical let's discuss them one by one first we will discuss about biological pollutants biological pollutants it includes pathogens like bacteria viruses worms and protozoa most of these are added by excreta of animals next one is chemical pollutants chemical pollutants are categorized into three subcategories these are inorganic such as phosphates nitrates fluorides and chlorides organic such as phenols plastics dyes and pesticides heavy metals such as cadmium mercury copper zinc etc are included in this category now let's know about physical pollutants physical pollution refers to waste heat released in water from industrial plants physical pollution involves the changes 
in the physical properties of water. Example, opaqueness, dust particles, solid waste, temperature, etc. I hope now you are clear about the pollutants. Now, let's know about sources of water pollution. We can broadly classify sources of water pollution into three groups. Domestic sewage, industrial effluence, natural surface runoff effluence. The major sources of water pollutants are domestic sewage and industrial wastage. Let us start from domestic sewage. The domestic sewage contains oils, human excreta, dirt, paper, rags, sand grains, dissolved material such as detergents and inorganic compounds such as sodium chloride, ammonium sulfate and ammonium phosphate and decomposed kitchen waste. In most of the cases, these pollutants are directly discharged into sewerage system. Thus, this polluted water pollutes the entire environment in various phases. It directly affects the quality of water, which is not fit for drinking, bathing, recreation and even for aquatic animals. It also pollutes the soil and contaminated soil affects the crop. Once the polluted crop enters the food chain, it may disturb the entire ecosystem. Another source of the pollution is our industries. Industrial wastes are also the major source of water pollution. Waste water from manufacturing or chemical processes in industries contributes to water pollution. Industrial waste water usually contains chemical compounds. During the last 50 years, the number of industries in India has grown rapidly. But water pollution is concentrated within a few subsectors mainly in the form of toxic wastes and organic pollutants. Industrial wastes mukh taur te paani de somya nu pradushat kar de han. Industrial wastes which aam taur te heavy metals, detergents and fertilizers, acid polluted water ate polychlorinated biphenyls shamil hon de han. Aao ek ek karke Heavy metals. Metals such as cadmium, lead and mercury which are present in industrial or mining wastes are poisonous and can be dangerous to humans. Let's understand through visuals. Cadmium and mercury can cause kidney damage whereas lead poisoning can cause damage to the kidneys, liver, intestines, brain and central nervous system. Compounds like mercury, arsenic and lead are neurotoxin in nature. For example, chronic exposure to arsenic may cause blackfoot disease. Arsenic may cause diarrhea, lung and skin cancers. This arsenic is responsible for kidney damage, ulcers in gastrointestinal tract, lung cancer and skin diseases. Mercury poisoning causes a disease called minimata in human beings. Minimata weakens the muscles and results in weakness in hearing and vision power, mental retardation and paralysis. Methyl mercury is also highly neurotoxin and it may cause memory loss, deafness and vision disorders. 
the asbestos fibers may cause asbestosis a kind of lung cancer while cadmium pollution may cause itai itai disease in japan due to consumption of cadmium contaminated rice it is characterized by bone disorder and cancer of liver and lungs jekar pani vich nitrates de 90 particles per million to zyada hon ta cyanosis da karan hunde han peen wala pani jo nitrates de karan pradushit hunda hai infants layi nuksan dayak hunda hai eh dimag tak jaan wali oxygen di matra nu kat karda hai ate blue baby syndrome layi zimmewar hunda hai eh surface water te ਕਾਈ ਦੇ ਵਧਣ ਫੁੱਲਣ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਦਦਗਾਰ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਅਤੇ ਯੂਟ੍ਰੋਫਿਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਕਾਰਨ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਫਲੋਰਾਈਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਵਾਟਰ ਇਜ਼ ਐਸੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਫॉर ਪ੍ਰੋਟੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਅਗੇਂਸਟ ਡੈਂਟਲ ਕੇਰੀਜ਼ ਐਂਡ ਵੀਕਨਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਦ ਬੋਨਸ ਬਟ ਹਾਈ ਲੈਵਲਸ ਕੈਨ ਹੈਵ ਐਨ ਐਡਵਰਸ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਔਨ ਹੈਲਥ ਦ ਐਕਸੈਸ ਯੂਜ਼ ਆਫ ਫਲੋਰਾਈਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਫਾਰਮ ਆਫ ਟੂਥਪੇਸਟ may lead to skeleton fluorosis or knock knee disease in which joints and bones become stiff and hard in india high fluoride content is found naturally in the waters of rajasthan in the villages of unnao district of uttar pradesh the fluoride content has been recorded as high as 15 to 19 particles per million fluorosis is characterized by chronic joint pain arthritic symptoms and calcification of ligaments national environmental engineering research institute or neeri which is located at nagpur identified several impacts of polluted water on human beings such as lead poisoning is responsible for hyperactivity learning disability and anemia copper may cause hypertension and sporadic fever zinc may cause vomiting and cramps chromium can damage the nervous system and may cause cancer cobalt may give a slow death in the form of paralysis overall we can say that industrial chemicals in water can be both naturally occurring or introduced by human interference and can have serious health effects after the industrial chemicals and the heavy metals Now there is a turn of detergents and fertilizers. Excess use of fertilizers and detergents may affect the quality of soil and affect the human life. Detergents and fertilizers contain phosphates as additives. They serve as nutrients for plants leading to their excessive growth in ponds, lakes and rivers. presence of excess detergents and fertilizers encourages the formation of algae which reduces the dissolved oxygen concentration of water this process of overnutrition is known as eutrophication this holds up the development of higher life forms such as fish sometimes acids are also emitted in the water it degrades the quality of water and sometime water is not fit for any use or it is just like a poison aam taur te jekar pani da ph scale 6.5 to kat hove ta pani acidic hunda hai ate je ph scale 8.5 to zyada hove ta pani alkaline hunda hai the acid polluted water having ph less than 3 is deadly to most forms of aquatic life the water downstream from a mine may get contaminated by acids 
mine drainage formed by microbial oxidation of discarded waste materials make mine water acidic. It mainly contains sulfuric acid produced by the oxidation of iron pyrites. Industrial wastes and acid rain also contribute to the acidic nature of natural water. Now come to polychlorinated biphenyls. Polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBs. Polychlorinated biphenyls have very high stabilities. These are used as fluids in transformers and capacitors as cleansing solvents, detergents and fertilizers. PCBs are carcinogenic and can cause skin disorders in humans. As we know, the oxygen is boost for our body. So, there should be the presence of the oxygen in the water. Let's know the other importance of the dissolved oxygen in water. Importance of dissolved oxygen in water. The concentration of dissolved oxygen in water is very important to support the aquatic life. If the concentration of dissolved oxygen becomes low, the water is called polluted. If the dissolved concentration of oxygen in water is below 6 particles per million, then the fishes could not survive in that polluted water. The two main sources of oxygen are the oxygen dissolves at the surface of water from the atmosphere and from photosynthesis. It may be noted that still or calm water takes up oxygen slowly whereas turbulent water takes it up more rapidly because bubbles are commonly submerged. Children, at the places where there are many aquatic green plants, the water becomes super saturated with oxygen during the hours of daylight due to photosynthesis. However, during night, photosynthesis stops but the plants continue to respire. Therefore, the amount of dissolved oxygen decreases. Consequently, during a period of 24 hours, some water samples have considerable amount of dissolved oxygen. The deoxygenation of water is carried out by various processes. For example, the dissolved oxygen in water is consumed rapidly by microorganisms to oxidize organic matter of sewage. Do you know why it is so? It is because of the concentration of the dissolved oxygen is not restored either by the turbulent flow of shallow water or by a reaction. It is not able to support many organisms. The dissolved oxygen in water is also consumed by the biooxidation of nitrogenous material. Most of the organic waste can be broken down by both aerobic and anaerobic bacteria which act under different conditions. Aerobic bacteria are oxygen consuming decomposers which bring about the oxidation of degradable organic matter into carbon dioxide, nitrates, sulfates, phosphates, etc. As a result of aerobic oxidation, dissolved oxygen in the water decreases. Due to short supply of oxygen, the aquatic organisms die due to suffocation. On the other hand, anaerobic bacteria do not require oxygen for the decomposition of organic wastes. The decomposition of organic waste by anaerobic bacteria produce toxic and foul-smelling substances such as hydrogen sulfide, 
ammonia, methane, ammonium sulfide, etc. This kind of oxidation of sewage is called anaerobic oxidation. Dissolved oxygen is an essential requirement of all aquatic life. After the dissolved oxygen, there is another parameter of safe drinking water that is biological oxygen demand or BOD and chemical oxygen demand or COD. The quantity of oxygen consuming wastes in water is usually determined by measuring the biological oxygen demand. Before going ahead, we must familiarize the definition of biological oxygen demand. Biological oxygen demand or BOD is the amount of oxygen required by the microorganisms in milligrams in five days to completely decompose the organic matter at 20 degrees Celsius of temperature. Parameter of biological oxygen demand in water less than 1 milligram per liter for pure drinking water. Below 1500 milligram per liter for a weak organic waste water body. Between 1500 to 4000 milligram per liter for a medium organic waste water body. While it is more than 4000 milligram per liter for a strong organic waste water body. Let's make it more clear by another example. Such as we know that the organic carbon matter may be converted into carbon dioxide. But for the conversion, one mole of carbon requires one mole of oxygen. BOD is directly related to the concentration of organic matter. Therefore, the high value of biological oxygen demand or BOD indicates that water is polluted. Therefore, the biological oxygen demand is taken as a realistic measure of water quality. The clean water must have a biological oxygen demand value of less than 5 particles per million. Whereas, biological oxygen demand of 17 particles per million or more indicates highly polluted water. In order to measure biological oxygen demand, the water sample is first saturated with oxygen. It is then incubated at constant temperature, usually 20 degrees Celsius for 5 days. This allows time for microorganisms in water sample to oxidize pollutants. The remaining oxygen is determined and the difference gives the biological oxygen demand. There is another parameter called chemical oxygen demand or COD. Now, let's define the chemical oxygen demand or COD. Chemical oxygen demand or COD is the amount of oxygen required to oxidize all the pollutants at 20 degrees Celsius in 5 days from the waste water. Certain chemicals other than organic wastes also react with dissolved oxygen in water. This is referred to as chemical oxygen demand or COD. It is measured on the behalf of biological oxidizable inert organic matter such as cellulose. If the BOD or COD values are high, it indicates that water is heavily polluted. In order to measure COD, the given water sample is treated with a known quantity of an oxidizing agent that is potassium dichromate or K2Cr2O7 in acidic medium. This oxidizes most of the polluting substances including those which are resistant to microbial oxidation. The excess of potassium dichromate or K2Cr2O7 is determined by back titration 
with a suitable reducing agent such as Mohr's salt. From the concentration of potassium dichromate or K2Cr2O7 consumed, the amount of oxygen used in oxidation may be calculated using the chemical equation which you can see on the screen. Potassium dichromate plus sulfuric acid gives potassium sulfate plus chromium 3 sulfates plus water plus nascent oxygen. The results are expressed in terms of amount of oxygen in particles per million that would be required to oxidize the contaminants. This is called COD. Do you know that the surface runoff from field of inorganic fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, manures bring heavy loads of pollutants into natural water bodies. They may reach the groundwater through leaching or may be carried to rivers, lakes and ponds. Once these pollutants are mixed or attached in the soil, then it affects the entire ecosystem. Let's know how. Natural surface runoff affluents. Once the fertilizer is used in the agricultural field, it shows its effects in terms of pollution. During irrigation or the rain, excess nitrates from fertilizers run down into ponds, lakes, streams, etc. It leads to thick blooms of algae. As a result, plenty of oxygen is used from water by these algae. This leads to suffocation for aquatic organisms. It affects the aquatic ecology as well as water becomes unfit for drinking, industrial and recreational purposes. So it is clear that the surface runoff also affects the pollution level. Therefore, we must resort measures to reduce water pollution. If you want to help keep our water clean, there are many things you can do. You can prevent water pollution of nearby rivers and lakes as well as groundwater and drinking water by following some simple guidelines in your everyday life. Do not throw paints, oils or other forms of litter down the drain. Use environmental friendly household products such as washing powder, household cleaning agents and toiletries. Avoid overuse of pesticides and fertilizers. This will prevent runoffs of the material into nearby water sources. Set up the waste water treatment plants on all dirty drains before they join the rivers. In order to prevent the spread of waterborne infectious diseases, people should take adequate precautions such as drinking water should be transparent, clear, pleasant in taste, odorless, pH value should be between 6.5 to 8.5, turbidity should be less than 10 particles per million, total dissolved solids should not be more than 500 particles per million, it should be free from disease causing microorganisms. It can be ensured by boiling, filtration of water. I hope now you are familiar with the causes, consequences and impact of water pollution. So now we have come to the end of today's discussion. Let us recapitulate what we have learned so far. Unwanted particles or contaminants in the water are known as water pollution. Water pollutants can be classified into three categories, biological, chemical 
and physical. Polluted water is responsible for several diseases such as Minamata abdominal pain, headache, chest pain, hepatitis, jaundice, cholera, dysentery and typhoid etc. Therefore, there is a vital need to reduce the water pollution by the precautions and the applied measures. Overall, prevention is better than cure. Now here is a quick test for you to find out how much you have actually absorbed. My first question is, water pollutants can be classified into how many categories? And the answer is 3. The next question is, pathogens like bacteria, viruses, worms and protozoa are biological water pollutants or chemical water pollutants? And the answer is biological water pollutants. The next question is, which pollutant is responsible for Minamata disaster? And the answer is methyl mercury. The next question is, which toxic pollutant is responsible for itai itai disease? And the answer is cadmium. The next question is, hepatitis, jaundice, cholera, dysentery and typhoid are waterborne diseases or airborne diseases? And the answer is, waterborne diseases. The next question is, which pollutant is responsible for skeletal fluorosis or knock knee disease in which joints and bones become stiff and hard? And the answer is fluoride. The next question is, name the subcategories of chemical pollutants. And the answer is, inorganic, organic and heavy metals. The next question is National Environmental Engineering Research Institute is located in which city of India? And the answer is Nagpur. Looking forward to the next class. See you then. Thanks.